Welcome back, everybody. You're listening to Cut the Shit, a podcast series that aims to take a closer look at the impact of the IT industry, both the good and the bad. Cut the Shit is brought to you by Plow Networks, a managed IT services company based just outside Nashville, Tennessee. I'm Brian Link, EVP of Products and Services here at Plow, and I'll be your host for this series. I'll ask questions, and with the help of our guests, try to dig deep on some of the key challenges we all face dealing with IT. So with that, let's cut the shit and get started. This week, Brian is taking the week off, so Talia and myself will be hosting the show. If you remember, we did an episode way back about our own journeys as non-technical people in the world of technology. Today, we have another woman in tech joining us on the show. Plow Network's very own Director of Client Experience, Jana Spear. Jana has been a part of the Plow team from the beginning. We learn about her career journey starting in real estate and making her way into the technology space. We also get into what client experience is and why now more than ever, it is an important role in the technology world. And we finish the episode with a fun little game of this or that. We hope you enjoy this week's episode. All right. Okay. Well, we are back with a, another episode of Cut the Ship, but this week uh, we are here with Jana Spear. And uh, no, Brian didn't have anything altered with his voice. Uh, the girls are back hosting this episode. <laughs> uh, so it's me, uh, Emily Starnes, and then I have uh, Talia D. Domenico, soon to be Talia Brooks. Whoa. Yeah. That's weird. <laughs> and then we also have Jana Spear in here, which is our Director of Client Experience. Uh, here at Plow, and so I guess to intro the episode, uh, we'll do some icebreaker questions first. Okay, How perfect. about that? That's perfect. I like so, icebreaker. Yeah. <laughs> um, I know. First of all, we had uh, some uh, issues getting to the vicinity today. <laughs> if you're watching online, you're probably like, "Where are we?" Uh, we are in a WeWork right now. Love it. So I'm sure we maybe scared the people at the front desk when I walked in with uh, two cameras, two ring lights, three mics, and all of us, but uh, we made it here. So uh, how about you tell us a little bit about like your work from home experience recently? How are you liking that? You know, it's a good balance for me. I live a good ways away, so Mm -hmm. it's very helpful. It gives me about two and a half hours back of my day that I can work. You know, it gives you the opportunity to let your dogs out if you, True. you know, for those of us who all have dogs (laughs) and um, uh, children, um, don't have those, but not littles anyway, (laughs) Uh, but for sure, I think it gives you some time back to your day. It it creates balance that, like, we've never seen before. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, I will say one of the things that I really did like, though, about working in office every day was the the 20-minute commute that I had to just sit in my car and listen to either my favorite podcast or scream, sing, whatever my favorite music is. Uh, When you're driving to work, since you did say you have, like, quite a drive to get here, um, what do you listen to in the car? I know you're a big music person, so huge, what are you listening to? Huge music. So it's it, uh, my taste it expands all over the place. I love everything from rock and roll, country, jazz, you know, throw in some Van Morrison. He's my favorite. Mm. Um, so I'm all over the place there, too. I utilize my time, though, too, to, you know, make calls, try to get mm. some things out of the way, get my day started, you know, take advantage of that time. Yeah. I do that too. I'm a, I'm a car caller. It's like the time we go and call and catch up like with my mom, my brother, um, and it helps the car ride go by a lot faster. <laughs> Completely agree. I think most would agree that, you know, if you've got long commutes, you better come up with something to do, whether it's learning yeah. Spanish or... Isn't it so bad, know. the attention span? Like, I can't sit in a silent car. I will go crazy. Never. Yeah. I cannot. No. Well, I feel like that kind of tees up perfectly because uh, you are definitely one of the hardest workers that I know. Uh, But let's backtrack it a bit um, and let's go back to maybe the start of your career. So what were you doing before Plow, before anything? What how did your career start? Um, so before Plow, I was in the real estate business. I um, that makes so much sense. <laughs> so, and, and then kind of to tag on to that, my sister and I had a small landscaping company on the heels of our grandmother's development company. So it kind of all made sense. We built houses, we had a landscaping company, and we sold real estate. That's well, how it kind of all got going, mm-hmm. or, or that was the beginning of my career. Yeah. So did you, would you say that 
selling has always been like something that you were passionate about or is it more like the people side of it? Selling, not at all. Mm -hmm. Um, Very contrived for me. That is not a role that I will probably ever do again (laughs) or would would even seek out. I would have to be desperate. Yeah. (laughs) But um, no, you know what? It's taking care of folks. You know, for Mm -hmm. me, it's just taking care of the client, making sure, you know, they're, they're, you know, they have everything they need, making sure um, they're happy. And, you know, everything else takes care of itself. I feel like if they're good, we're good. Yeah. Was that something that um, because you did the real estate that you kind of were exposed to, like seeing like the the smiling faces and like the happiness at the end of it when you were able to be like, and here's your new home. Your keys. Yeah. (laughs) You know what? Honestly, for me, it was the deal. Mm. I I loved the structure of the deal, you know, making sure my clients were, you know, kind of on top and, and, and they were well, you know, Getting their money's worth, getting a good deal, getting you know they you know you know what I felt like at the end if they were happy and pleased with their price point and they got what they wanted I was good. Yeah. Yeah. What were the what were you like? What type of real estate were you in? Was it residential like homes? It was residential. Okay, and that was in I mean Tennessee. I'm assuming. Absolutely Tennessee. Yeah. How long did you do that? Uh, I've had a license since I was 18. Wow. So that's when I started building houses as well. So uh, it's been a long time. Yeah. Long, long time. I took a brief stint. Um, Just about like 12 years. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, do you have any um, advice maybe for people wanting to buy a house right now? I know the market is kind of a hot topic right now. <laughs> you know, if you're watching the market right now, I'm sure everybody, I'm sure you guys are as well. Mm-hmm. Um, it's going down again just a bit. So, you know, we see these fluctuations of market going up and down like everything else. You know, our economy is is kind of in a state of, um, you know, people are just not sure right now mm-hmm. what's going on. Mm-hmm. So... I think people are holding on to their money, and I think yeah. that they are definitely, you know, hold out. I think prices are going to go down again. Well, you heard it you here heard first. It. <laughs> uh, I was personally, I just wanted to know that for uh, my own selfish uh, ideology of maybe, maybe I'll buy a house. I'm just kidding. Who are we kidding? The apartment life is life for me. Um, okay, well, apartment I guess. Apartment and we work life. Totally, we work. <laughs> See, I'm all about the rentals. One might say that's uh, not a smart investment, but I would say it's no investment at all. <laughs> um, okay, so I guess getting into, um, you went, you did your real estate, you did um, sound like some landscape work, but uh, what, how, let's just talk about that stark transition into technology. How did you get here? Um, you know, it became part time. I had a farm in Giles County, and that kept me pretty busy. Mm-hmm. I was, you know, doing real estate on the side after years of kind of being out, and then, you know, threw myself back into it, and it just was not doing it for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I just needed more. I needed more. It was time for me to make a move. Yeah. Completely. I mean, and boy, did I. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think that's definitely something that we hear a lot, uh, especially when people come into the space from more of like the non-technical background. Uh, You spoke about doing real estate and then Talia and I have no actual technology background, but we still found ourselves in this space and the fact that the industry is like constantly changing and it keeps you on your toes, which sounds like was something that you were looking for that maybe your last uh, job didn't offer. Yeah, for for sure. I bore easy, so Mm. I need things. I need change. I need things going on. I need lots of activity and um, you know, it keeps me keeps me hopping, keeps me busy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's uh, definitely fair. So I guess um, there's a lot of I think stigma in this industry that comes with uh, the term IT or technology. That it's kind of more of like a male dominated force, or it's more of a you have to be an expert to work in it. Um, have you ever had yourself? in a position where you had felt um, like imposter syndrome or feelings of doubt in maybe not necessarily your decision to work in this career, but as you're working in it, feeling like, okay, maybe I'm in over my head here. I don't really know what I'm doing. What, have you ever experienced that in your role? Every day, no, no. (laughs) You know, for sure with every role change that I've played at Plow, you know, there is a feeling of maybe self-doubt that, you know, you've got to, okay, pick yourself up, figure this out, move forward, the company has to move forward. 
I'm going to make sure it does. It's not going to fall on my watch. So, you know, um, got some good folks around me to, to help me through those times when mm-hmm. I, you know, when you have self-doubt. And um, it's been, you know, it's been an experience and it's been, you know, it's been interesting. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. I think that's that's so true. And especially as women uh, in this space, this feeling that you have to be almost more perfect because if you mess up, there already is those uh, stereotypes and uh, kind of more of a pressure, I think, on women than most men in this industry. And especially with the role that you play as our director of client experience, like you, you are the liaison for these people. So there's a lot of pressure, um, I guess, outwardly presenting that is on your role. So I guess one of the questions that I have for you on that is, do you ever feel like you have to be like perfect at your job? Um, I do. Mm -hmm. I do. And that's (laughs) self-inflicted. I I definitely do it to myself. That is how I am in my everyday life. And um, it's a fault for sure. Um, But you know what? It keeps you, it keeps the drive there. It keeps you working hard. And, you know, I'd rather it be that way than, yeah, than the other. Yeah, (laughs) totally. So when you first started at Plow, um, the, the role of director of client experience didn't exist at the time. So what were you doing when you first started uh, working with the company? Truthfully? hmm So I think I've said this in an earlier interview, but mm-hmm. I walk in and Brian and Cameron are sitting at a card table. They had just come out of jobs where they needed a break. Um, they found themselves, of course, they knew that they were in, in, in non-competes and they were kind of taking some time to figure out who they were and what they wanted to do. And the office was in complete disarrayment. I don't work like that. I, you know, my life is, you know, right. very structured and very organized most of the time. Mm-hmm. So I thought, good God almighty, we've got to get this fixed up quick and in a hurry. It, at least be presentable. Let's at least present right. ourselves like, you know, we've got a company going on here. Right. And, um, you know, one thing, you know, it led from me kind of helping them get organized and, and setting up. And it turned into, hey, we've got this project. Do you think you'd be interested? And I said, well, yeah, sure, sure. I love, you know, of course. And so it turned into, a, a, you know, a, a project management engagement with a client that uh, ended up being multi, you know, located multi-sites, and it went from there. And it was a ride, for sure. I felt like I had been dropped off in the, you know, the, <laughs> the hounds of, uh, you know, whatever. Uh, uh, it was It was interesting. You were project managing and kind of in sales for a, a big chunk of your time at Plow, mostly, right? Up I, until this point, I, I was. There was that brief stint, as I, you know, we don't talk about that. I uh, attempted sales. Yes, <laughs> yeah, I got thrown into sales. Yeah. <laughs> Just try to block that out of your memory. <laughs> so block that out. But no, other than that, it's been pretty much. You know, I've kind of played every role. It was, you know, the telecom. You know, uh, the project management. Anything that needed to be done. I was doing it, whatever they needed. It's funny, though, because everything you've done, though, it sounds like you always were thinking back to the client and wanting to work with the client and help the client. For for sure. And I think naturally, Brian was like, you know, clearly you can't sell. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, It just feels so contrived. But they like you. (laughs) Yeah, it was so contrived for me. And then, you know, to be quite frank, I've sold so much more not being in sales mm-hmm. than mm-hmm. I ever did in sales. It's just awkward for me. Mm-hmm. You feel, I felt <laughs> contrived. Yeah. I felt, you know, it just, Some it, people it like wasn't thrive natural. In that and, it just was not natural yeah. for me. Yeah. Some people thrived in that and others don't. Yeah, yeah. I'm with you. I don't think I could it's do that. Just, it's mm-hmm. not, you know, if I'm, you know, I'm busy, I like to be busy. I like to be, you know, the back end taking, you know, taking care of the client and making sure, you know, we're, we're all moving forward in a cohesive, you know, way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I totally agree. And I think you made a really good point by saying, um, like, you, you always had the client in mind, and then you were like, yeah, and I was selling more when I wasn't focused on selling, when yeah. I was focused more on the client. You could just have a relationship. Yeah. yeah. Just which, it's very relationship. And build the trust. Yeah. yeah. Which is yeah. which is fairly new in this industry, I think a lot of people would say. I mean, for the longest time, it was definitely focused on here's what you need and here's why you need it, not necessarily what do you need, what is going to solve your problem. So I guess let's backtrack a bit. Um, we've used the term quite a bit throughout this episode so far, but could you give us like your definition of what client experience means? 
Uh, yeah. Um, initially, you know, I was brought in um, when I was approached with the client experience. It was like you're naturally already doing these mm-hmm. things. You already, you know, take care of the client. So we're seeing a push and uh, of, of, you know, that, you know, the industry's going that way. You've got to have somebody over, you know, taking, you know, taking a look for the client, making sure they're taken care of, you know, holistically, the clients are, are, you know, they they're they're what keeps us here. Right. Mm-hmm. So without those clients, you know, we're kind of sunk. So from the perspective of the client, when I feel like they're happy and you know they're feeling taken care of and they're part of the process, you know, mm-hmm. it's a win-win for everybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I guess we talked a little bit about at the beginning um, the work from home. So what would you say that the pandemic has, like what has been the effect you think on your role specifically in these relationships with the clients since the beginning of this? Has it changed? Has it been harder? Has it been brought you guys together? What would you say has kind of happened because of this kind of switch to more of a hybrid, less in-person environment? You know, for us, for Plow, I feel like we got busy quick. Mm -hmm. There were lots of things to do, get people home, you know, the the whole remote working. Um, So I feel like we never missed a beat and probably Mm -hmm. we were more, you know, we were busier than ever. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, For the client and for those that were truly having, you know, they were, there were those that were stuck. Mm-hmm. I mean, they didn't leave their homes. Mm-hmm. You know, we were, la- like their companies said, you're you not cannot. allowed to meet. Yeah. Yeah. So those relationships, um, not that they suffered, because you just had to find other ways to communicate. Right. There, you know, the whole, um, you know, the 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 conferencing, the you know, the Teams, the Zoom, yeah, that became a thing really quick, mm-hmm. quick for folks. And you did learn that, you know, what you can get a lot done. You can work in wherever and not have to make the drives every day yeah Mm -hmm. um the real estate market probably suffered as a result Mm -hmm. nobody Mm -hmm. need we you know at one point i think we were thinking we need bigger space we're growing we're expanding we're bringing in more folks but in reality we didn't we didn't because so many of us choose to work a couple of days from home and you know we come in more to see everybody be a part of the team and um you know just have that camaraderie yeah. Yeah, totally. That's so funny. I never thought about it from you kind of had both sides of it. You had the side where you're working so much more with the client because they needed help setting up these tools mm-hmm. and applications so they could them and their teams could work from home, but you weren't actually doing the like more relationship mm-hmm. side of it where you can like meet in person and have meetings and like go to dinner and like just that like whole personal side of it. So you kind of saw like both sides and then kind of teetered like and, but you were still able to have a lot of uh, conversations and talk with you them know, often, but less like on the social it, side. You, you got really good on the phone. Yeah. Talking, yeah. Talking to folks. Yeah. For sure. Just yeah. to keep those relationships going. I mean, and they were, you know, suffering as well. Yeah. I mean, they wanted to see folks. They wanted to be in person. But, yeah. you know, so many of the larger companies did not allow. Yeah. We were lucky. I felt like, you know, we, we kind of got out before others yeah got to yeah it on it like i wonder if it really like helped build your trust in your relationships in a way because you were there with them guiding them through this time where a lot of people didn't know how to work from home or how to transition their teams and you we kind of you mainly held their hand in that process mm-hmm. and got them like to where they could keep their business running you know i feel like it was a time for for plow to really shine and, yeah and we did that for so many of our clients yeah. And I think that it was a trust building, and they loved us more for it. And, you know, it's mm-hmm. just, again, it's reinforced those relationships and moved us on, you know, mm-hmm. moved us on. In yeah. This. Why they're important. Yeah, mm-hmm. totally. So I guess on that, um, was there anything that you maybe learned from uh, this transition to the hybrid environment that you wish you would have implemented maybe before this had happened? Um, not really. I mm-hmm. wish we could have done a few, you know, or it would have been, you know, you don't know what you don't know. Right, totally. And there were so many companies that just did not allow the work from home. Mm-hmm. And they were forced into that really quickly. Mm-hmm. I believe there will be those same companies will probably make those employees come back. But for us, 
You know, we've got such an incredible team. You guys know this. And everybody genuinely wants to see everybody succeed. And so we trust that we're going to get our jobs done. So for Plow, I mean, we're, we're great. We yeah. <laughs> we're all good. Yeah. Is there stuff on the client side through rem the re transition to remote work that you're like, oh, dang, we need a process for this? Or like, ooh, we didn't have something in place to help them with, you know, X. That, because of remote, kind of brought that to the forefront? You know, that system team's just kind of jumped in there and figured that out. I'm confident they have more processes than ever, but mm -hmm. they were just amazing on the fly like that. You know, mm -hmm. none of us expected this to happen. It was unfamiliar territory for, for lots of us. So, but they were ready and they jumped in. Mm -hmm. It was cool. Yeah. Um, One cool thing out of the deal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so you kind of mentioned uh, about the relationships that you have with your coworkers and, you know, leaning on them sometimes to help you out with um, whatever. And I know me and Talia do that a lot because we don't come from this technology or technology background. We don't have as much uh, technical knowledge as they do. <laughs> we've, we've learned a lot, but... Have you found yourself utilizing like your teammates who are more of those uh, technical backgrounds to help you with your role? Absolutely. I rely on those guys every day, mm -hmm. every day for something. I mean, you know, I don't pretend to be technical. Um, I know enough just to be dangerous. And so, you know, when I need something, I can reach out and they're there. They're there to, to clean it up, fix it, make our clients happy. Yeah. yeah. I think... Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, do they ever come to you, too, and, and the opposite? And right. say, hey, Jana, I heard this from a client. They wish we had this in place. Can you, like, do the work to get it implemented Absolutely. for them? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's like a two-way street, it, for it, sure. It really yeah. is. Yeah. They know where my strengths are. Yeah, for sure. I feel like there's something that's just very uh, trustworthy and genuine from a person who doesn't necessarily have the most technical background and is willing to admit that and to be like, look, this is what I do and I do this for X, Y, and Z and I know you can do this. And so working together and not putting up that facade that you do know everything. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's something in the, especially in the technology space that a lot of people are kind of used to is people being experts when maybe they aren't. There's something just very genuine about that approach. Uh, and I think definitely the clients can see right through that too when you are being genuine with what uh, you're saying. Agreed. Completely agree. Nobody likes to know I, at I all. Don't, <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't even pretend to and, and don't want to know. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thinking back to the beginning of your career, um, and this doesn't have to be just in client experience, it can be just in the technology world at large. Is there any advice that you would give to a younger self? that you know now, hindsight 2020, that maybe anybody entering this space would take um, something from? Yeah, I mean, find a great mentor, find somebody that can kind of put you under their wing. Um, yeah. Again, I was fortunate enough to have Brian and Cameron to do that for me. Um, they saw something, not sure what they saw, <laughs> but, um, or maybe desperation. Maybe that's oh, what uh, they saw. You're too hard on yourself. Um, but, uh, you know, find somebody that'll do that for you. There are plenty of folks out there and and you know they can certainly help people foster that that interest and, and kind of bring them along mm -hmm. I feel like we talked about this in the last episode that we did together but there's so many things within the technology industry that you can teach but there's certain things about people like how hard they work your communication skills how personal you are and just like genuine good person that you that you can't teach that I feel like mentors and managers and things look to that more mm -hmm. versus Agreed. the technical piece that can be taught, you know. You know, y'all, it's common sense. I mean, it's common sense. It's communication, you know, letting that client know what's going on, good, bad, indifferent, and keeping them abreast always of the, you know, of all situations. And then they always know that they can count on you to deliver. You know, the message may not be what you want to hear, but it's truthful and it's mm -hmm. it's timely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's h half the battle. I feel like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, agreed. Um, so um, I mean, you just kind of mentioned it, but sometimes it isn't always what they want to hear, or maybe a no has to be said. So. Could you think of a time where you faced, 
I guess mainly in this client experience role, what was one of the biggest challenges that you have had to overcome? And it could be a specific example or just at large with the role. Yeah, so um, the biggest hurdle is of lately, and it's been, you know, it's been inventory restraints. Mm. Um, We have no idea, and quite frankly, I think half the time our vendors don't. And so these fictitious dates come and go. We have to communicate that to the client. I mean, and it's not fun. It's not fun. We've got large projects going on. We have inventory that we can't deliver. And, you know, just keeping the client, you know, always in the know what's going on there. Right. I feel like a part of your role, too, that doesn't get brought up as much is Of course, you deal with the client very head on, but you also are managing the teams Mm -hmm. under you that also deal with the client on the daily basis, like our client support center. Like you are sales ops overseeing them and how they interact with the client and all the things that they do that also affects the client's overall happiness. That is like a huge part of your role as well. Yep. That's where the inventory piece kind of falls in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I'm sure people are thinking, why does she have anything to do with inventory? But yeah. For sure. <laughs> it's that sales ops side, and you know that's a side that I'm very passionate about too. You know those processes and you know delivering to the client on time. Um, it's been challenging, and then you you know it can incorporate the price hikes. We've all mm-hmm. seen them. We've seen you know where you know hardware, software, everything is exponentially higher mm-hmm. now than it was last year or two years at this yeah. time. Mm-hmm. You know it's unfair, but it is the world we live in. Gas mm-hmm. is higher, food is higher, everything's gone mm-hmm. up, and you know like technology, you know we're seeing that, or in technology we're seeing that as well. Things mm-hmm. are just higher. And you hate to deliver that message as well. Sorry, it's, you know, three times higher than it was last year. It's not us. We're not reaping that reward. It is being passed along. That's exactly what I was thinking. And as the business's IT partner, the blame gets put on us and you, even though a lot of the times it's not really like a decision that Plow has made. It's just a vendor has decided to increase the pricing on whatever they're selling. But you you have to get the brunt of it. You do. And you know what? It... You hate it. You hate delivering that news, you know, and and I even feel like, you know what, really, really we're doing this to people right now. So it kind of kind of pisses you off a little Mm -hmm. bit that you almost feel like people are being taken advantage of. And that's, you know, I hate that. Mm -hmm. I hate for people to be taken advantage of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, definitely it's tough, but uh, I think with the way that the world is right now and the inflation, gas prices going up and everything, it's to be expected, but um, it's definitely probably hard as a client to understand the difference between, you know, we're not setting these, it's not set by us, and we're not taking anything from this. Like, we're right. still making the same that we would if the price was lower. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's that's always hard. Uh, Tali brought up a good point um, talking about your managerial role here at Plow. So... Why don't you speak a little bit more towards that? Because I think that is uh, something that, yeah, exactly like you said, it kind of gets um, maybe less attention than the overall client experience title. You, you're actually in charge of like an entire business segment. So talk a little bit about your um, experience as a manager, maybe how you bring your team together to get everybody on the same page. And that way we're all presenting the same front as the director of client experience? Um, You know, that's the sales ops role. So Mm -hmm. primarily our function is to make sure that the sellers are, are, are being taken care of. You know, we've got procurement, we've got delivery, we've got inventory, we have the invoicing side. So, um, you know, taking, you know, taking those quotes, turning those quotes around for the client. So that's kind of, in a nutshell, that's kind mm-hmm. of the watered-down version of, of what we're doing on that side. Yeah. But you meet with the uh, client support center often, right? You mm-hmm. have team meetings to go over, like, how to present yourself on the phone mm-hmm. to clients. Like, there is so many little things, too, that you do that, like, web out on this overarching client right. experience that's not just – you think it's just dealing face-to-face with the client, but you yeah. are also working to kind of, kind of prune – and uh, tighten up all the other people that also deal with you know and deal with them. Those guys are fantastic. They yeah. they they really are. They you know they love taking care of our clients as well. They're super patient. God, there's a couple that I can think <laughs> of that whew, 
they're way better than I am at it. Yeah. So mm-hmm. um, they're just they're they're a fun group of guys. I think you guys ought to do a segment on just those folks, like the STC. We've actually yeah. talked about it. Yeah, so they cute. have a, a really different perspective. Yeah, yeah. And because you're dealing with a, more of the uh, business executives, right? And the decision, decision makers, makers, and they're dealing with you know everybody else, managers and people yeah. below that are just having problems with their with their tools. That, that, that's right. Yeah. And, you know, they're getting blown up. People want you know they want their you know the end user want you know they want their equipment mm-hmm. fixed. They want whatever's going on in their now. world, yeah. and they want it now. Mm-hmm. So those guys have got to have the finesse of talking you know talking clients you know, out of the tree, fixing their, whatever their problem is, delivering, you know, you know, all that with a smile on their face mm-hmm. and making sure, you know, they're being taken care of. You know, mm-hmm. we have CSAT scores and surveys in place. And, um, you know, I'm happy to, you know, say that we are at a, what, a 4.92 right now mm-hmm. out of five. So yeah. pretty incredible. Yeah. But you're in charge of, too, all that feedback collection and there's any ever bad feedback like that's on you to, to talk address to and fix yep. and yeah I it mean, is really nuanced yeah and I mean you said you were looking for a little bit more out of your career and being more busy so I think you definitely got that <laughs> with this role I don't think there's probably ever going to be a time where you're just like chilling no, yeah. I'm chilling, I'm chilling. I don't chill well anyway y'all yeah. know this about me yeah yeah idle hands for me I get into trouble when I chill yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, so I guess one of the last questions I have then is kind of on that uh, um, piece with you working with the other people who are actually talking to more of the end user and the the clients facing people who aren't necessarily dealing with the decision makers. What do you do to get everybody, you know, motivated and inspired to keep doing it? Because like you mentioned, it is a very um, difficult role and it takes a certain type of person to be able to uh, do these like help desk roles. So what is some or what are some of the things that you like to talk to your team about when it comes to like motivation or inspiring them to like keep, you know, doing the best for them? You know what? Um, we've built, you know, this business around, you know, everybody just wants to do a good job. Mm-hmm. The culture is amazing. Um, nobody wants to let let the guys down. So I feel like you know, all of us are jumping in, doing the very best, and reminding them without the clients, right. with you know, without you know, without clients and you know their business, we have no business. So always keeping that in mind that you know, they take care of us, we take care of them. Yeah, I guess part of it too is just like that, like just doing a, a extensive vetting process to like hire the right people mm-hmm. who have that innate desire to service the client well from the get-go. Like, that's probably and the biggest hurdle. It, true, and you can tell. You can kind of tell early yeah. on. You, you can tell mm-hmm. if they're going to fit in culturally with us, mm-hmm. if they're going to, you know, put the client first always and, and you know, do a mm-hmm. good job. Yeah, but, I mean, you're always sending out kudos for, for some of those guys to get good survey scores, and you send out a newsletter every month with highlights and, and the tip of the month and all that, so... You do a lot of small things, too, that people see mm-hmm. and read, and it'll help motivate them. Yeah. Well, I kind of have this amazing marketing team that <laughs> helps me do those things. I'm <laughs> like, well, we actually help you put together this newsletter every month. No, no but I think, I think that raises a great point, though. It's like, especially with your working... Hold on, I'm just going to... There's a janitor. <laughs> It's like the train, people, but it's a janitor instead. Uh, When you are working with a smaller-sized business, it really is everybody kind of working together and figuring it out, you know, as you go. And everybody has to be kind of on the same page when it comes to the overall goal because it is a smaller company. And everybody, no matter what role you're in, has such a large impact on the Mm -hmm. results that um, come from it, especially with the client, you know. I mean – when you're only dealing with X amount of people who talk to the client, if one per, if one person, one person. isn't That's doing right. it, it has like a very large ripple effect. Mm-hmm. Um, they motivate each other too. I feel totally. Like. They they help work together and motivate each other. And I feel like obviously I don't I'm not in that role. But if my coworker was on the phone with a client beside me and he was super positive and super helpful, or she, 
and you know acting in a specific way that would rub off and motivate me to do the same and be the same and I feel like they right anytime I hear them in the room talking to clients like I definitely feel like they, sure they do help each other person. it really does They're so precious I know it really it does. does like I would not have that patience I know that, that they have so yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is a it is a good skill they, yeah. that they all have yeah, yeah. So I think maybe to wrap the show up, we'll do a little fun game. Um, it's called yeah. This or That. Love so it. you just pick one or the other. There's no don't, don't think know. about it. It's like the first thing that comes okay. to your mind. Um, okay, so this or that. Okay. Call or text? Call. Okay. Sing in front of your coworkers or dance? Both. Okay. Whoa. Yes. Yeah, this is a fun we'll fact. We'll be asking you that next time yeah. we have a team event. This is a fun fact about Y'all Gianna. remember the Christmas party? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, she loves to listen to music while she works, so I could definitely see yeah. you wanting to sing or dance. Yeah. Or both. Um, okay, so are you a dog or a cat person? Dog. Dog. All right, come in early or leave late? Both. Yeah. yeah. Hard worker over here. <laughs> Meetings all day or be at your desk all day? Meetings. Okay, eat the oldest thing in the office fridge or clean the office bathrooms. Clean the office bathroom. <laughs> yeah, that, that mini fridge in the back, <laughs> that's scary. <laughs> no, absolutely not. All right, last question. Work vacay at the beach or in the mountains? Beach. Beach. Y'all knew that. She was just there, yeah. in fact. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, if you're watching online, Jana has a nice glow She's got right a now. great tan. She just yeah. got back from the beach. Y'all, I She's swear I ghostly. use like 50. <laughs> That's yeah, impressive. SPF is important. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think that's it for the show today. Thank you so much for coming in and coming to this lovely WeWork with Thank us. Thank you all for having so much fun. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this episode. If you are enjoying the podcast, we'd appreciate it if you would become a subscriber wherever you get your podcasts. And if you could rate and review the show on Apple Podcasts and Spotify, that would really help us out. Or you can just go old school and tell your friends, your family, your colleagues, and hell, anybody else who you think might want to hear something like this to listen in. If you're on social media, make sure to follow us on Twitter. Our handle is at cuttheshit underscore pod. We are also on TikTok, at cuttheshitpod, all one word, where we post lots of clips from the podcast. And last but not least, you can also watch the YouTube version of the show on our YouTube channel at Plow Networks. Until next time, take care and have a great day.